Hey everyone, Cooper here, host of the fine podcast you're listening to. I just want to let you know that the episode you clicked on has a format that is very heavily inspired by a podcast called The Bookening. To be clear, our thoughts and opinions in this episode are our own, but the format is very similar to this podcast. I just wanted to give you a heads up and give credit where it is due. With that out of the way, enjoy the show. Coming up next, Booking It discusses Hatchet. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Booking It. I'm your humble and eloquent host, Cooper Cobbs, and joining me today are two of our three panelists, Matthew Killingsworth. Howdy. And Isaiah Rajke. What's up? And today, fellas, well, this past week, we have had something that has pretty much never happened before in our lives, except for Isaiah. Well, it kind of <laughs> happens every three years here. It's true. We had the big ice a few years ago, and another big ice, and then... Yeah. Uh, it wasn't this big. It's never been this big. <laughs> No, but so Sunday, you guys probably it's in the news, but we were hit with a giant snowstorm. For those of you who don't know, we're in North Texas. Oh yeah, and, and we were like, oh my gosh, there's like two inches of snow on the ground. Whoa! Yeah, two inches. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, we yeah, learned. But, yeah, we learned that was, yeah, that, that was an appetizer. Yeah, that was an appetizer for our eight eight course meal. Yes, but um, um, it's we've we've had on and off power. I mean, it was horrible. Like, we're lucky to be even recording this right now. I actually recorded a, like a mini little three minute thing saying we probably wouldn't be able to get an episode out. <laughs> but <laughs> the power turned out at like eight PM and I just recorded a little thing real quick. Yeah, the snow was awesome going sledding and all that, but then coming home to a cold house that was like sixty degrees inside it was horrible. <laughs> and no hot water. Dude, Ugh. if you were outside in the zero degree weather and you came into a sixty degree house, how is that terrible? You'd you want, want it to, like to actually degrees. be warmer. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, we have the best thing we ever did to our house was added a gas stove. So we were able to, like, <laughs> oh, light nice. it manually. <laughs> yeah, that's what we have, too, actually. So we had, like, eggs and sausage three days in a row, which was Yeah, oh. us, too. I yeah, know. We have yeah. an electric one. So. <laughs> oh, tough. Oh, but we man. have fireplace and a uh, propane grill thing, like a mini one that we can put on yeah. our table. So it was fine. Yeah. We had uh, Isaiah, Isaiah and his family slept by the fireplace like three nights in a row, didn't you? Yeah, our house hit like 58, I think, at oh, night. Man. Oh, my gosh, dude. One night we had no power for like five hours straight. and that was Yeah, horrible. we had no power on Monday for a straight eight hours. Oh, man. That's tough. Yeah, it, it got really cold. Like, my hands I had started to, uh... like getting numb. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I had to turn off my faucet in the shower just now because they've been dripping like nonstop. So the pipes oh. don't freeze and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mine, yes, mine is still dripping right now. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, I did something uh, last night, guys. That uh, I watched Mulan on Disney Plus. Oh no! Well, oh. Did you I came think in of there it? with low expectations, and it didn't rise above those expectations. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I watched it and I was like, meh. I mean, the best part of the old one, we can all agree, is Mushu, and they took that out. So. Oh, I know. Right. I mean, they tried to make it more dramatic, and it just it it, it didn't work. Nope. Yeah. The best part was the end credit sequence. I will give it that. It well, I'll have to watch sequence. it then. I still haven't seen it. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. I've had no incentive to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. Either. I also I heard they also took out the uh, "Make a Man Out of You" scene. Yeah, they song well, scene, they, which is my favorite part. They, there's like they no had songs. Some scenes. Yeah, there's no songs. They had some scenes like that. But they didn't have a song. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Matthew has some special affinity for that song since he danced <laughs> to it in a concert one time. <laughs> in a performance. Yeah. It was pretty fun. <laughs> it was fun to see Matthew in like a, uh, what do you call those? Taekwondo suit or yeah, whatever. Yeah, taekwondo suit thingabob. And like kicking. I was a black belt too. Because <laughs> I bought a black belt from Walmart because for the show. Because he's a man. That's right. Hey, we are Walmart people here, not Target people. We don't think we're better than everybody else. <laughs> okay, all right. Today, guys, the book of discussion. The book of discussion is Hatchet. So let's get some yeah. baggage on Hatchet. So Ooh, let's let's do Isaiah. Start us off. Um, 
So basically, I had never heard of this book until actually one of you guys, one of the listeners, recommended it to us. And then I read it for the first time like two weeks ago because we had to read it for a podcast. Wait, 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 wait. I'm, this is the first time I'm hearing this. Someone someone suggested that we read Hatchet? No, well, no someone commented on YouTube and asked us. <laughs> on that, YouTube, who, yeah. Who was it? Uh, uh, was it a friend I know? Give yeah. me a minute. Uh, Julie Gonzalez. Oh, thanks, Julie. Um, well, that's a good recommendation because I will go ahead and merge this into my baggage for y'all. Pretty good transition. Very smooth transition. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, so I've heard about this book for a long time, mostly from my one friend who introduced me to my favorite book, The River. Um, he is a complete non-book guy, so if he likes a book... Oh, yeah. Then Jackson it must would totally have, yeah this is his book. It, yeah exactly it, if it, if he likes a book then it's either terrible literature because he has no idea or it's a really good book <laughs> <laughs> because it has to be that good to get to his reading level and so but he actually read this and liked it and so he told me about it and like I've heard about it from him and some other friends stuff so I've heard about it for a long time and I knew essentially the whole story I just never actually read the book until Cooper said we're doing a podcast on it I did not know that no, I thought I thought you would read it a long time ago uh uh-uh. I've never read the hatchet oh really uh uh-uh. hmm. and yeah so uh Cooper suggested or not Cooper um Julie suggested it on the comments and then Cooper said we're doing it and then so I got it from the library and read it so boom Nice. How about you, Coop? I read this book too young, probably. <laughs> um, so I remember in in the summer I did like a creative arts camp or whatever. And this was first or second grade. I don't remember which, but it was one of those grades. And wow. I read it then, and I Ooh, finished wow. it then. And I, I remember select parts of it that we'll, I'll talk about later. Um, and then, uh, obviously, some of our friends recommended it, and so... Uh, for the podcast, and so I was like, why don't we do it this, this semester? So I put it on the list and read it again, and I actually found that it was even better than I remembered. So, yeah, here we are. Nice. Yeah, it was a lot different than I expected, like, yeah. as far as the writing yes. and the intended audience. Yeah, exactly. Um, but the story was the same that I'd heard of all these years. Mm-hmm. A good story. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get into it. What are you guys' opening thoughts on Hatchet? Well, I kind of just gave mine. Yeah. I mean, it, I just thought it was a cool book, and yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> I think. Wow, you're on a book podcast, and all you can say is, eh, cool book. Come on, cool man. Book. Give me more. Fine. It was an amazing book. There like we go. The it was amazing. Oh. Stuff. Yeah, I Welcome thought it was pretty. To- Sorry, it's bad. I thought I thought it was pretty creative, and I I don't think there's like a ton of plot holes or anything, so good job, uh, Gary yeah. Paulson. Let's do the book in thirty seconds, really fast. Who wants to do it? You do this one, Cooper. You did the last one really good on on the river. Yeah, oh, I did. Okay. Okay, three, two, one, go. So basically, there's this boy. He's flying to meet his father because his his parents been recently divorced, and he's flying to meet his father, and all of a sudden the Pilot has a heart attack, and he crash lands in a forest, and he has to survive for two months with just a hatchet. That's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's pretty short. I probably that was a book, book in, in ten like, seconds. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's pretty impressive. much what it's about. Yeah, it is. And, yeah, it's it's good. And there's not a lot of, uh, what do you call this? What do you call talking in a book? Uh, Dialogue. Dialogue. Yeah, you're right. There's yeah. like... Some in the catalog. beginning. And yeah, there's the not end. a lot of catalog. No. There's no, just no, no, like no. barely. Catalog. barely. Bruh, bruh, dialogue. Bruh. Dialogue. Dialogue. Not catalog. <laughs> dialogue. That's what I meant. <laughs> Man. We can edit that out. <laughs> no, we're keeping that. Oh, man. Yeah, so there's not a lot of dialogue in this book. Um, but it's really good because it doesn't really need it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I the Two things that st- I actually listened to this. Um, yeah, same. And two things kind of stood out to me. The first one was his writing. He can fill time really well. Like, he can write several pages on just a few seconds. And his psychology is really good. Like, what's going on inside Brian's head? It's not He's boring either. No, it's not. It keeps you interested in it. Yeah. But it's great. Just a time filler um, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. That was 
that was that was pretty much the main thing I noticed. And it's again his psychology was really great. Just what is Brian thinking during this time and his feelings throughout the whole thing. So it was really good. He went really deep inside him. Yeah, I think if he wouldn't have done that, where it was just basically telling what happened but nothing about like what he was thinking. I don't think it would have been that good of a book or anything. This is, yes, that's exactly. basically what made it a good book for me. Yes. Uh huh. And I was yes. actually kind of thinking while I was reading it that this could totally be a short story in like twenty pages. Mm-hmm. And it totally could. But yeah. he he just Gary Paulson just like you were saying can turn any amount of time or like pages into way more and still make it interesting. Yes, exactly. I mean, it, it was really good. Um, Oh yeah, so I, I told I told my parents this after I finished it, and mom told me I should say it on the podcast. So uh, I said, you know, I think it should be a must read, mandatory reading for every middle school and above boy. <laughs> but I don't think any dad should read this <laughs> um, because it, it's really good motivation for like younger boys um, to kind of you know work hard. I guess you could say yeah. work hard at yeah. what they do. But then I don't want to give it to a dad. And then be like, all right, son, you're going to slave away for me all day. Anyway, that's just some of my <laughs> honest thoughts. <laughs> that's how my mind works. Um, oh, yeah, so we also just finished reading Up From Slavery for School. And there were so many comparisons, right, between these two books. Both of them, there are four main lessons kind of from this book. I'll go over later. But the four, I mean, one of the main ones was kind of work hard. And Up From Slavery, um, for those of you who don't know, it's Booker T. Washington's book. Um, really kind of says, you know, when you have nothing, just work hard and you can build something for yourself. And I thought that was really also apparent in Hatchet as well. Oh, if we're going to compare Booker T. Washington to Hatchet, then I got I to gotta say his quote real quick. Uh, the, the quote, One of the, my favorite Booker T. Washington quotes, is probably my actual favorite, is that knowledge applied is power. And that's like what Brian was kind of thinking, except not actually thinking it. Yeah. Like, he didn't know he was thinking it. But that's basically how his mind was working. The whole time he was strained in the woods, he was he had, had like, some little bits of knowledge, and he applied it and learned from it and figured things out and ended up surviving. Exactly. That's a good point. Like, you know, knowledge of the wilderness, knowledge of the forest mm-hmm. is, I mean, it's, it's power there. And, he and he learned. Brian showed how even just a little bit you can – you can learn from it. Like he didn't even know, he didn't really know how to build a fire, but he knew what things were necessary for a fire. He just did, had to figure out how to get those things. He knew you needed oxygen. He knew you needed fuel. He knew you needed uh, heat. And he just didn't know how to get those things. So he figured out uh, one step at a time how to get them, and he built a fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. Um, it's kind of also like uh, him realizing that. Food is the first thing, and everything else comes from that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've read several books kind of like this, like My Side of the Mountain, and we did uh, Sign of the Beaver. Just kind of, you know, w- what it, what does it take to live in the wilderness? What do you have to do? What lessons do you have to learn to do it? And I always like books that kind of go into what is the law? I like call the wild to like what is the law of the wilderness? Kind of thing like that. Yeah, and I loved the part where this was also when he was trying to make fire. Um, like he had a twenty dollar bill in his pocket, but he was like, "Look, if I don't make a fire, I'm not gonna live very long. I need this fire. This p- piece of paper, which is usually worth twenty dollars, is worthless out here. I'm gonna rip it up and use the paper to make a fire." And I was like, yeah. at first I was like, "Whoa!" And then I was like, "Well, that that actually makes sense because you know what? It's not worth twenty bucks to die." Mm-hmm. That's a good Matthew quote right there. It's not worth 20 bucks to die. Can we, can we change it real quick? Can we say it ain't worth 20 bucks to die? Just, you know, for the record, so it sounds better. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. So I remember just a few things from this book, the first from the first time I read it. And uh, one of them was the uh, light refracting kind of where he was like, why can't I kill a fish, right? Um, mm-hmm. And then he realizes that, oh, it light refracts, and in like first or second grade that was my first time realizing that light does that in yeah. water dude i'm and done with cool science is... stop talking about that you are not done with science isaiah <laughs> no You're i mean for freshman today. in high school right you got a long way to go <laughs> i was That's talking right. about for today yeah oh okay but uh it's in science this week we were doing kind of a deep dive into light we're doing physical science this year and it was cool to kind of as we were reading hatchet kind of see the deep science behind what happens when light refracts in water and stuff like that. 
So that was and really like a, cool. Yeah, and like a real example too, because they had an example in the book that was like, if you put a quarter in a little container of water and then look at it from a certain angle, and it's like, that doesn't. Make, why is that useful at all? Like yeah. that doesn't make any sense. Exactly. I would rather. <laughs> they I would rather the, yeah they try to spearfish a fish than yeah uh, yeah it makes yeah. sense. I mean, I've learned more from Hatchet than I have from that science book. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Same. Uh, yeah. Maybe I have. We'll see. If yeah, I maybe. Stranded, we'll do that. I will. um, <laughs> maybe. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say kind of the four main lessons that I took away, and then we can kind of break off in discussions. So the first one is self pity don't work, and then the second one is don't take shortcuts. Work hard and write the first time. Learn from your mistakes. That was a big one, and don't take anything for granted. And then also kind of goes along with don't throw anything away. So those were kind of the four big things. And there were two, the two big ones were self pity don't work and learn from your mistakes. But all of those were kind of equally apparent throughout the book. Like in the first one where he's just stranded and he's trying to figure things out. And then um, what happens? He can't make the a porcupine. fire. The porcupine happens. And he's the just. The porcupine like, stabs his leg. I'm going to tell yeah. the listeners. Dude, I feel now. bad for this kid. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Just went from <laughs> I remember... one bad thing to another. But then one of my favorite parts of the book is where he goes, I have good luck. I'm still alive. I didn't die in the plane crash. And he's like, you have to be unfortunate to have good luck. Yes. And I was like, that is Gosh, actually really this good. This kid <laughs> is actually kind of wise. Like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, he, he, he after that, the porcupine incident, he was just lying there like, I want to die. Like, he's mm-hmm. in, in it. And then he realized afterwards, he's like, that didn't change anything. I sat there and cried for hours. Yeah, you sat there and cried. And, and did it, it, didn't, it, did, it didn't do anything. So self-pity doesn't work. He got to work. It and I thought work. that was, exactly, don't work. So I thought that was something that really could be used in the culture today and with oh, just yeah. everything that's going on. So yeah. I think that was a great lesson. Stop, yeah, stop feeling bad about yourself. Stop worrying about, like, what what how it affects you. Just... Exactly. And with Up From Slavery, too, it was kind of like, you know, let's look past our past and get to work on the future. Uh, let's not waste time wallowing in self-pity when we could be building something. Right. So that was that was a great thing. Isaiah, you have any comments on that? Um, no, you really pretty much said it. Yeah. All right, the next one. Don't take shortcuts. Work hard and write. So this is kind of what happens when, um, what happened? It was his shelter. It got torn apart, right? Yeah. Was it the skunk? Did that get in? Tornado? Didn't it didn't get torn apart by the tornado. Too. Yeah, but that, I don't think that was. I think that was inevitable. Yeah, this something shooting Something happened, and stuff. he was like, gosh, I could have done that right the first time. And so then he got to work fixing it, you know, and he worked hard and the right and the first time so that he didn't have to, you know, have any mistakes later mm-hmm. or stuff like that. And the next I, one is – sorry, guys. No, no, no. Just, you go ahead. You get into it. No, I was going to go to the next lesson. Yeah. Okay, the next one is learn from your mistakes. This is really a big one, kind of right. in the second half of the book. I kind of saw two halves to the book. The first one was kind of self-pity don't work, and then learn from your mistakes was the second half. Mm-hmm. This one was a big one. There was several chapters devoted to just mistakes, you know, like one little one can break apart everything and stuff like that. Yeah, but then you can build it back stronger. So mm-hmm. this is what something I wanted to say about uh this book so also for school and challenge one we've been reading through this book this semester called whatever happened to penny candy and it's this guy explaining very basic and simple easy way to understand economics in the u.s and like how uh money works and how uh, the value of money gets driven up and down and inflation all that kind of stuff and um, it's, multiple times, it seems like every chapter, maybe every few chapters, he'll say something like, we, we have to, we can't ignore the history. We have to know our history so that we don't repeat it. And it's like, if you, so that you, if you know what you've already done and know what you've done wrong, then you can learn from it and do it differently this time. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the same thing. Um, that's what it made me think of is like, that's such a good lesson that applies to many areas of a person's life is learn from your mistakes actually really every area yeah exactly was that yeah anything to say um i mean this basically just applies with 
uh, the lesson before, just do it right the first time. Or mm -hmm. not really, but what I mean is like um, work hard and do everything you know. Like if you know what to do something, or at least you know the basics, do everything you know and try your hardest. If it fails, see why it failed. Sit there and learn. Don't just get mad and give up. Yeah, and then don't try wallow again. in self pity. Exactly. They all connect. They all connect. Yeah. The last thing is don't take anything for granted. So I really like the part in the epilogue where after he had been rescued, spoiler alert, by the pilot, <laughs> he, um, <laughs> he, uh, or another pilot, or hunter guy, Zuma Bob, and, uh, he <laughs> you, said, you said the pilot. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, uh, he went back and he was, every time they go to a grocery store, he would just look at everything there, just the entire quantity of everything there. And he'd just be like, wow, there's so much quantity here. And he would, you, you know, you take things for granted sometimes. Like you can get, uh, like like Brian said, a hamburger, fries, and a malt, you know, any anywhere, anytime you want. Mm -hmm. um, and there's so much of it. But in the wilderness, you know, you don't have all of that. You don't have that luxury. And he never this, threw anything away either. Yeah, this is crazy because this is something I was actually thinking of this week while we were losing our water and losing our electricity and, uh, like, pipes were getting frozen, all this crazy stuff that we've never really experienced before, was I was thinking about our, our, our water never actually ran out all the way, but it got pretty close for a few hours. And um, I was thinking, like, er, and we also we, we got this email from the county that said when the water comes back, it's not going to be clean. You need to boil it before you can drink it. And... Um, thankfully that never ended up happening. But while I thought that was happening, I was thinking, um, uh, I should be more grateful for having clean water just at the turn of a little faucet at, on the side of the sink at any yeah. time I want when like some people have to live with this full time and some people can't just go turn on the TV and have power. So like yeah. one night it was completely dark and we were eating dinner and we had to light candles and light the fire yeah, same and here. stuff like yeah, that. Same. And I was thinking like, how ungrateful I am for, for the lights that we have, and yeah. you know, like you never think of lights, just normal light bulbs in your house as being like a crazy blessing or anything, but it really is. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, this whole week has been like a wake up call and just making me realize how much like we have and how much we take for granted. Yeah. 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 And it's insane how much you wish you had a toaster so you can make a frozen waffle instead of having eggs and sauce every right? day in a row. Like that, seriously, um, like that's, honestly, that's, that's the biggest thing I take for granted this week is the toaster. Yeah, the guys are like, oh, I take for granted the light bulbs and the mine's water. like the microwave. I just want a toaster, man. Yeah, yeah the microwave. I just want the microwave. Yeah, it's true. That's a, that's a big part. Yeah. Um. Then I'm now I want to talk about <laughs> Domino's pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I say uh, it was like, hey, you guys want to come sledding at the high school by my house? We're like, bro, have you not noticed? There's like. Several inches of snow on the ground. He's like, eh, I'm from Chicago. It's, you know. I'm from Chicago. Dude, my parents taught me how to <laughs> drive Chicago. in the snow, okay? Yeah, like, that's true. literally just this week. That's true. Isaiah's dad actually came up and picked us up, me and my sisters, and I got a lesson to how to learn how to drive in the <laughs> snow from Mr. Mike. Very he's yes. like, hey, they told you how to brake on ice? And I was like, yeah, you don't. And he's like, no, <laughs> yeah. you pump the brakes. You know, yeah, you oh, do. My mom's like uh, had me go over, like, or, like, whenever I'm going, like, slam the brakes, and I could feel the car sliding behind me. If I pump it, it doesn't. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. Oh. Wait, wait. She let you drive on the ice? On, um, like, snowy area that, like, was a bit more, like, wet and slippery. Yeah, Mr. Mike nice. was yelling at Lucky. this guy in the intersection, and he was like, you don't accelerate. You let it roll first, and stuff like <laughs> that. It was funny. Oh, yeah, because then you can spin out of control if you accelerate. Yeah, anyways, like, anyways, we got to get back to the Yeah, sorry. So I want to talk a little bit about the alternate storyline here. So kind of in the beginning, the reason that Brian is flying over the wilderness in Canada oh, is to get to okay. his father because his mom and his dad are getting divorced. And I totally did not remember this, like, at all. No, uh -huh. I forgot about it. And it just completely went over my head. And I was like, wow, this is, that's kind of the reason I thought, wow, I should not have been reading this at, you know. Oh, yeah, The Secret? First, second grade, yeah, The Secret. Um, I didn't really like how it ended, ended with The Secret. And I was like, that's not the point of the book. You know, I feel like you should have ended it with a different point uh, of the strong book. But what are you guys' thoughts on the kind of that alternate storyline and how it played into the story? Did you guys like it? Did you guys not like it? Do you think it was effective? If, for me, that was also the part that I had never heard of. I would always just heard of it as the guy getting strained in the woods. But um, I guess it would have been 
I don't think they really needed the whole the secret part. You know, they could have he could have said that they had his parents had a divorce and this is the reason and said why. But he didn't. I mean, he didn't really have to make it a whole continuous yeah. part of the book. But, but it honestly, also it did help and it was kind of relevant because of it really affected Brian's feelings and yeah. like the way he thought about things and really in pretty much every chapter he he would think about his parents and think about the secret and the divorce and that kind yeah. of stuff the whole time like honestly i don't think we ever had like an exposition dump where the author is just dumping things on us we're uh-huh. always in nope. Brian's perspective pretty and much and we're always learning yeah we're always learning with him mm-hmm. yeah which was pretty cool oh yeah but yeah all yeah, right well it's going to be listening but. to the beginning of the book i basically just thought that was just to set up to say how he got on the plane and then yeah. that's it. Like, nothing else. He's, he's uh-huh. spent a lot of time on the plane. Yeah. That is true, yeah. But, uh, cause, but he made it interesting, just like we said earlier, with how, how well he fills time. And, but, and, like, the pilot, too. It wasn't like he, he goes, the pilot had a heart attack, and then but and then it shows how Brian figured that out. It was like the the pilot was doing all this weird stuff and like, yeah, bad step. smells, and you were like, what the heck is going on? And then when Brian figured out it was a heart attack, then you did. It was yeah. like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, one of the other things I remembered from this book was the radio thing, where he has to like flip the switch mm-hmm. off. That was one of the other things that I remembered from. Oh yeah, video. very specific. Oh yeah, yeah. That the plane yeah. scene was actually pretty cool, kind of ha- seeing the process of him putting the plane down and stuff. I but love anyway. how he got to fly it too. Yeah. I know. Yes, that was pretty cool. I think everybody but, wants to fly a plane at least once. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, man. Um, but speaking of exposition in this book, Cooper, uh, I'm guessing you were going to bring up at some point uh, Gary Paulson's writing style. Oh Wait yeah, not. I was actually oh, yeah. you're, you're not even I was going to bring it up earlier, but I forgot to. It seems like okay, every yeah. author has kind of their different <laughs> their different Dude, kind of writing style. This is style. noticeable though. Yeah, it's really interesting because it's not just a, your standard third person. You really kind of live with Brian. Uh, but it's not first person. It's kind of it's 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 not quite the Tolkien or Lewis style of third person. Uh, no, but no. it was kind of what. It's it's everything's repeated like three times. All so that's how you know what's important is he always repeats oh, it. Oh, that. Yeah, he's, like, he's like, like I'll read the. Uh, can I read this real quick? Yeah, go ahead. The thinking started always. It started with a single word. Divorce. It was an ugly word. He thought a tearing, ugly word that means fight and yelling and lawyers. God, he thought how the how he hated lawyers who sat with their comfortable smiles and tried to explain to him in legal terms how all he lived was coming to an end, or was coming apart, and the breaking and shattering of all solid things, his home, his life, all the solid things, divorce, a breaking word, an ugly breaking word, divorce, secrets, no, not secrets, so much, just the secret. When, yeah. Uh, yeah, just like, and then he keeps on going, he keeps talking more and more, he's like, what he knew, what he knew, the yeah. secret, divorce, the secret. And it's like, like, wow, we better remember that for later. <laughs> yeah, then like Except the mistake didn't. part. He was like, mistakes. The mistake. yes. Yeah, and he said that like six times over the next I know. chapter. And it's, yeah, it it's, really at first it was a little, I don't know, I thought it was a little cheesy. And then it, it kind of got, I mean, I thought it was kind of powerful. It was. A little bit definitely. later. For sure. It was I definitely, really it was, yeah, I, I did really enjoy it too. Mm-hmm. You know, guys, there's like a bunch of sequels to this. No. There are. Uh, really? Yeah. So there's like are there's one sequel, good? and then I've read one. It was kind of like an alternate, like what if Brian didn't get picked up? What if we had to live through the winter? I read that one. <laughs> I haven't read any other ones though. I'm Is it by Gary right Paulson? Now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. What if he didn't get picked up? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but I want to go back and read them because I think that'd be good. But anyway, that's about it. You guys have any final thoughts on Hatchet before we go into some donor shoutouts? What do you say, re- readability age range for this? I think, well, like you were saying earlier, you read it and the whole kind of divorce secret part all went over your head and you yeah. still really enjoyed it. I'd say you can read it pretty young. Yeah. I'd say grade school, first grade and up. Isaiah? I'd go, with, yeah, about that age. I mean, yeah. I think I'm going to go middle school. I think even though it goes over your head, it's still kind of more of, an older kind of theme, so probably remember, around fifth grade or so. Remember, though, if you're a dad and you read this, don't make right. your sons your slaves. <laughs> yes. 
us. That's the lesson. That That's the lesson from this podcast. Yeah. What did we learn, children? Nothing else. Yeah. Um. All right. Okay. Let's do some donor shoutouts. So, Matthew, what would someone do if they want a donor shoutout? They would go to patreon.com forward slash booking it and donate to any of our $5 or higher dollar tiers. That's right. And the link is in the description below. All right, Isaiah. Nana. Oh wait, hang on. Let's let's do um, let's do animals in the Canadian wilderness. All right. Okay. Nana. I'll choose. Um, okay. She is a bunny. Nice. All right, Isaiah. Vamp Happy and Wayla. Um, they will be foxes. Nice. All right, Matthew. Becky. She's a moose. Oh yeah, Isaiah, your grandparents. Uh, my grandparents will be squirrels. Do you want to say their names? Oh, um, Mike and Sylvia. Nice. All right, Isaiah. I mean Matthew, Uncle Sebby. Oh man, Uncle Sebby will be the bear. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, man. All right, Isaiah, your Uncle Jenny and Sam. Oh my Wait, god. Did you just say Jenny and Uncle Sam? Uncle Jenny. Um, <laughs> it'll be the porcupines. That's going on the blooper reel. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, say that again, Isaiah. Porcupines. Porcupines. Oh. All right, and then Matthew, Isaiah's cousins, Moses and Zara. Moses and Zara. Ah. Uh, one of them can be a. <laughs> what kind of birds are there there? We should do a bird. Oh, the full birds. Eagle. Nah. Yeah, an eagle. And, and and a hawk. Nice. All right. And Isaiah, last but not least, Chris. Chris Hagedon. I will oh, give him a fish. What a legend. <laughs> <laughs> a, fish, a, a fish, a fish, no, a fish. No, 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 no. He's a fish. wolf. wolf? He's a fish. Wolf? Yeah, he's right. a wolf. Hold he on, wants on. to be a fish. I'll give him a wolf. Ah. Yeah. There we go. They now eat fish. Well. cut it out to be like that. All right, and make sure you guys check out his podcast, Like Lightning. Uh, are we still doing that? I thought he like canceled it. Oh yeah, it's but it's still it's still it's still on there. All right. Oh okay. Thank you guys so much for donating. We'd really appreciate it if you guys could give, even if it's a little little amount a month. We'd really appreciate it. And uh, oh yeah, we really want to do Lord of the Rings. Just five more dollars, and we do Lord of the Rings this semester. Um, for those of you who are confused about that, and if you like. If you're going to Patreon and seeing how much it is, we are getting uh, donations from like my grandparents and stuff like that. Uh, just like they're giving cash, they're not doing it through Patreon. So we yeah. are a lot higher than what it says on Patreon. So the goal is exactly. a bit off. We're we're five dollars away $5 from Lord away. of the Rings. So if you want right. to make me lead, read Lord of the Rings, that's right. Make my read Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, yes, but for now, keep on booking it.